President Brigham Young said he had prepared a short discourse on the subject of the resurrection, which he had called upon Elder George Q. Cannon to read. Elder George Q. Cannon then read the following discourse. I wish to present to the Latter-day Saints the doctrine of the resurrection in its true light. To satisfy the philosophy of my own mind in regard to this doctrine, I shall be under the necessity of commencing with the works of God as we find them in the beginning, or rather the beginning of the history we have of the earth. We admit the history that Moses gives of the creation or organization of this earth, as stated in his writings, to be correct. The philosophy of my mind, with all the experience I have gained by observation and knowledge of facts, tells me that there is nothing made, formed, or fashioned without a being to make, form, or fashion the same. Then my own reasoning teaches me that myself, as a mechanic, with all others upon this earth, and those who dwell in the heavens, when we commence any work of mechanism, have an object in the same. God had an object in view when he framed this earth and placed vegetation and all creatures upon it, and man was brought here for the high object of an increase of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, glory, and honor, each and every person, creature, or thing in its own order and time, that all may harmonize together and receive this glory and honor. The particles that compose the earth were brought together for a certain purpose by its great author. This purpose was, and still is, to bring this earth and all things upon it into a higher state of glory and intelligence. In the beginning there were laws given by which all nature was to be governed or controlled. It is true that man transgresses these laws, and would change them if he had the power to do so. But there are laws which he cannot disturb, and which operate regardless of man's actions. Among these is the law which pertains to the resurrection of the body of man, and also to the resurrection of the earth, for this earth has to undergo a great change, or, in other words, has to be resurrected. Abel, the martyr, was the first man of whose death we have any account. He brought his offering to the Lord and was accepted. This proves that he was a righteous man, and by his righteousness he so far sanctified the particles of this earth that comprise the component parts of his body that they became entitled to a glorious resurrection, which he undoubtedly obtained when Jesus arose. If Abel had been eaten by dogs or lions, the component parts of his body never could have gone to compose the component parts of any other bodies. Why? Because the laws which govern the elements would not permit this to be done. The question may be asked, do not the particles that compose man's body when returned to Mother Earth go to make or compose other bodies? No, they do not. Some philosophers have asserted that the human body changes every seven or ten years. This is not correct, for it never changes. That is, the substances of which it is composed do not pass off, and other particles of matter come and take their place. Neither can the particles which have comprised the bodies of men become parts of the bodies of other men, or of beasts, fowls, fish, insects, or vegetables. They are governed by a divine law, and though they may pass from the knowledge of the scientific world, that divine law still holds and governs and controls them. Man's body may be buried in the ocean, it may be eaten by wild beasts, or it may be burned to ashes, and they be scattered to the four winds. Yet the particles of which it is composed will not be incorporated into any form of vegetable or animal life to become a component part of their structure. Are they gross, tangible, and, in their organized capacity, subject to decay and change? Yes, and if buried in the earth they undergo decomposition and return to Mother Earth. But it is no matter how minute the particles are, they are watched over, and will be preserved until the resurrection, and at the sound of the trumpet of God, every particle of our physical structures necessary to make our tabernacles perfect will be assembled, to be rejoined with the Spirit, every man in his order. Not one particle will be lost. I have a few questions to ask the philosophical world, those especially who are well skilled in chemistry. Is this earth, the air and the water, composed of life? Or do they or any portion of them consist of inanimate matter, or of that that has no life in itself? Another question. If the earth, air, and water are composed of life, is there any intelligence in this life? The philosopher may take his own time to answer these questions, and when he has satisfied himself, he may ask himself again, Are those particles of matter life? 
If so, are they in possession of intelligence, according to the grade of their organization? As far as we are concerned, we suggest the idea that there is an eternal life, an eternity of organization, and an eternity of intelligence from the highest to the lowest grade, every creature in its order from the gods to the animalcule. Bear in mind, you who are believers in the resurrection or in the works of God, that man has sought out many inventions and has striven hard to learn the mysteries of God and godliness by his worldly wisdom, yet there are many things which science, with all its tests, cannot find out. Matter may be divided into an infinitude of atoms until they pass beyond the power of the microscope to discover them, and the most skillful chemist who dwells upon the earth knows not whither they go. My position is, and which I declare to the Latter-day Saints, it is beyond the power of man, without revelation from God, with all his science, to know whether these bodies go into other creatures to form the component parts of their bodies, or whether they merely pass into the already organized body to resuscitate it and contribute to its sustenance. I declare to the Latter-day Saints and to all living upon the earth, who have intelligence to understand, that the particles that comprise the component parts of our bodies will never enter into other bodies to form the elements of their bodies, but these very identical particles that now compose our bodies will be resurrected and come together by the power of the trump of God, and will be reunited to form the body, excepting the blood, which will not be necessary to our existence in an immortal state, and then be prepared to receive the spirit preparatory to their exaltation. Query, would not the particles that compose the body of our Savior, according to their intelligence, oppose the idea of becoming a part of any other body but his? Again, would not the saints, who are faithful in magnifying the priesthood of the Son of God, object to the particles which now compose their bodies, and which they have sanctified through obedience to that priesthood, entering into and forming parts of other bodies than their own bodies, which their spirits had not possessed, and of which they knew nothing in this life? Although some may think that the substances of which our bodies are composed are borrowed for our use during this mortal existence, it is not so. Neither will they be thrown off at death, never to be restored. And though in the resurrection the bodies of the righteous will be raised immortal and free from all corruption, they will be nonetheless tangible or perceptible to the touch of those who are permitted to handle them. The question may be asked, will the bodies of those who do not observe the laws of God, and which are not sanctified by obedience to them, come forth in the resurrection? Undoubtedly they will, but not at the same time, nor to the same glory that they do who observe the laws of God. The earth also abideth the law, and filleth the measure of its creation, and though it shall die, it shall be resurrected in glory, a sanctified creation, suitable for the residence of celestial beings. The elements will be burned and purified, and be renewed, but not one atom of the earth's organism will be lost, for that which is governed by law shall be preserved by law. And for everything which our God has created, he has prescribed laws. There is nothing so minute as to escape his notice. There is no creation so immense as to transcend the bounds of his power. All are alike, subject to the operation of his decrees. He called matter from chaos and created the earth, and the heavens are studded with planets. The glorious workmanship of his hands, he has hung those mighty orbs in space, and their courses are fixed. And by the exercise of his power, the original elements which have formed the bodies of men will be brought forth in the resurrection, bone to bone, sinew to sinew, flesh to flesh. Not one hair shall be lost, and all this in obedience to law, that the substances which have formed the tabernacles of men, or of beasts, or of fowls, or of fish, shall not be intermingled or lost, but shall all be restored to their own places, though they may have been swallowed up in the depths of the sea or been scattered to the four winds of heaven. To illustrate these facts connected with the resurrection of the body, we will quote from the revelations which the Lord has given to his children. The Testimony of Ezekiel The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, 
Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, as I was commanded, and I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews of the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. Ezekiel 37, 1-14 the testimony of Job. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Job nineteen twenty five twenty six twenty seven. The testimony of Daniel. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Daniel 12, 2 The Testimony of Luke Now that the dead are raised, even Moses shewed at the bush, when he called the Lord the God of Adam, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Luke twenty thirty seven. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and, said, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he shewed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. Luke twenty four, thirty six through forty three. The testimony of John. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless but believing. John twenty twenty four through 27 Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. John five twenty five twenty eight and 29 Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Revelation twenty six thirteen. 
The Testimony of Matthew. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Matthew 27, 52-53 The Testimony of Paul For our conversion is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3, 20, 21. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans eight eleven. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we had not been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans 6, 4, 5. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat, or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, and there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 through 23, 35 through 39, 42 through 44. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive are re and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the voice of the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4:14 4, through 16 The Testimony of Abinadi And if Christ had not risen from the dead, or have broken the bands of death, that the grave should have no victory, and that death should have no sting, there could have been no resurrection. But there is a resurrection, therefore the grave hath no victory, and the sting of death is swallowed up in Christ. He is the light and life of the world, yea, a light that is endless, that can never be darkened, yea, and also a life which is endless, and there can be no more death. Even this mortal shall put on immortality, and this corruption shall put on incorruption, and shall be brought to stand before the bar of God, to be judged of him according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Book of Mosiah, chapter 8, paragraph 9. The Testimony of Jacob For as death hath passed upon all men, to fulfill the merciful plan of the great Creator, there must needs be a power of resurrection. And the resurrection must needs come unto man by reason of the fall. And the fall came by reason of transgression. And because man became fallen, they were cut off from the presence of the Lord. Therefore it must needs be an infinite atonement. Save it should be an infinite atonement, this corruption could not put on in corruption. Wherefore the first judgment which came upon man must needs have remained to an endless duration. And if so, this flesh must have laid down to rot and to crumble to its mother earth, to rise no more. O oh, the wisdom of God, his mercy and grace! For behold, if the flesh should rise no more, our spirits must become subject to that angel who fell from before the presence of the eternal God, 
and become the devil to rise no more. And because of the way of deliverance of our God, the Holy One of Israel, this death of which I have spoken, which is the temporal, shall deliver up its dead, which death is the grave. And this death of which I have spoken, which is the spiritual death, shall deliver up its dead, which spiritual death is hell. Wherefore, death and hell must deliver up their dead, and hell must deliver up its captive spirits, and the grave must deliver up its captive bodies, and the bodies and the spirits of men will be restored one to the other, and it is by the power of the resurrection of the Holy One of Israel. Oh, how great the plan of our God! For on the other hand, the paradise of God must deliver up the spirits of the righteous, and the grave deliver up the body of the righteous, and the spirit and the body is restored to itself again. And all men become incorruptible and immortal, and they are living souls, having a perfect knowledge like unto us in the flesh, save it be that our knowledge shall be perfect. Second book of Nephi, chapter 6, paragraphs 2, 5. The testimony of Amulek. For behold, the day cometh that all shall rise from the dead and stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Now there is a death which is called a temporal death, and the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we are now at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. Now this restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not be so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but all things shall be restored to its perfect frame, as it is now, or in the body. Book of Alma, chapter 8, paragraph 10. The Testimony of Alma But this much I say, that there is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and the state of the soul in happiness or in misery, until the time which is appointed of God, that the dead shall come forth, and be reunited, both soul and body, and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Yea, this bringeth about the restoration of those things of which hath been spoken by the mouths of the holy prophets. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. Yea, and every limb and joint shall be restored to its body. Yea, even a hair of the head shall not be lost. But all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. Book of Alma, chapter 19, paragraph 7. The Testimony of Samuel For behold, he, Jesus, surely must die, that salvation may come. Yea, it behoveth him, and becometh expedient that he dieth, to bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, that thereby men may be brought into the presence of the Lord. Yea, behold, this death bringeth to pass the resurrection, and redeemeth all mankind from the first death. Book of Helaman, chapter 5, paragraph 6 The Words of Jesus and it came to pass that he, Jesus, said unto Nephi, Bring forth the record which ye have kept. And when Nephi had brought forth the records and laid them before him, he cast his eyes upon them and said, Verily I say unto you, I commanded my servant Samuel the Lamanite, that he should testify unto this people, that at the day that the Father should glorify his name in me, that there were many saints who should arise from the dead, and should appear unto many, and should minister unto them. And he said unto them, were it not so? And his disciples answered him, and said, Yea, Lord, Samuel did prophesy according to thy words. And they were all fulfilled. And Jesus said unto them, How be it that ye have not written this thing, that many saints did arise and appear unto many, and administer unto them? And it came to pass that Nephi remembered that this thing had not been written. And it came to pass that Jesus commanded that it should be written. Therefore it was written according as he commanded. Book of Nephi, chapter 10, paragraph 3. The Testimony of Moroni And because of the redemption of man, which came by Jesus Christ, they are brought back into the presence of the Lord. Yea, this is wherein all men are redeemed, because the death of Christ bringeth to pass the resurrection, which bringeth to pass a redemption from an endless sleep, from which sleep all men shall be awoke by the power of God, when the trump shall sound, and they shall come forth, both small and great, and all shall stand before his bar, being redeemed and loosed from this eternal band of death, which death is a temporal death. Book of Mormon, chapter 4, paragraph 6. Words of Jesus in Book of Doctrine and Covenants. 
Now verily I say unto you, that through the redemption which is made for you is brought to pass the resurrection from the dead, and the spirit and the body is the soul of man. And the resurrection from the dead is the redemption of the soul, and the redemption of the soul is through him who quickeneth all things, in whose bosom it is decreed that the poor and the meek of the earth shall inherit it. Therefore it must needs be sanctified from all unrighteousness, that it may be prepared for the celestial glory. For after it hath filled the measure of its creation, it shall be crowned with glory, even with the presence of God the Father, that bodies who are of the celestial kingdom may possess it for ever and ever. For for this intent was it made and created, and for this intent are they sanctified. And again verily I say unto you, The earth abideth the law of a celestial kingdom, for it filleth the measure of its creation, and transgresseth not the law. Wherefore it shall be sanctified. Yea, notwithstanding it shall die, it shall be quickened again, and shall abide the power by which it is quickened, and the righteous shall inherit it. For notwithstanding they die, they also shall rise again a spiritual body. They who are of a celestial spirit shall receive the same body which was a natural body. Even ye shall receive your bodies, and your glory shall be that, that glory by which your bodies are quickened. And there shall be silence in heaven for the space of half an hour, and immediately after shall the curtains of heaven be unfolded as a scroll is unfolded, after it is rolled up, and the face of the Lord shall be unveiled. And the saints that are upon the earth, who are alive, shall be quickened, and be caught up again to meet him. And they who have slept in their graves shall come forth, and their graves shall be opened, and they also shall be caught up to meet him in the midst of the pillar of heaven. They are Christ's, the first fruits. They who shall descend with him first, and they who are on the earth and in their graves, who are first caught up to meet him, and all this by the voice of the sounding of the trump of the angel of God. Section 7, paragraphs 4, 6, and 27. For a trump shall sound both long and loud, even as upon Mount Sinai, and all the earth shall quake, and they shall come forth, yea, even the dead which died in me, to receive a crown of righteousness, and to be clothed upon, even as I am, to be with me, that we may be one. And the end shall come, and the heaven and the earth shall be consumed and pass away, and there shall be a new heaven and a new earth, for all old things shall pass away, and all things shall become new, even the heaven and the earth, and the fullness thereof, both men and beasts, the fowls of the air and the fishes of the sea, and not one hair, neither moat, shall be lost, for it is the workmanship of mine hand. But behold, verily I say unto you, before the earth shall pass away, Michael, mine archangel, shall sound his trump, and then shall all the dead awake, for their graves shall be opened, and they shall come forth, yea, even all. Section 10, paragraphs 3, 6, and 7. For the day cometh, that the Lord shall utter his voice out of heaven, the heavens shall shake, and the earth shall tremble, and the trump of God shall sound, both long and loud, and shall say to the sleeping nations, Ye saints, arise and live. Ye sinners, stay and sleep, until I shall call again. Section 14, paragraph 5. But behold, the arm of the Lord shall fall, an angel shall sound his trump, and the saints that have slept shall come forth to meet me in the cloud. Wherefore, if ye have slept in peace, blessed are you. For as you now behold me, and know that I am, even so shall ye come unto me, and your souls shall live, and your redemption shall be perfected, and the saints shall come forth from the four quarters of the earth. Section 15, paragraph 7. Yea, and blessed are the dead that die in the Lord from henceforth. When the Lord shall come, and old things shall pass away, and all things become new, they shall rise from the dead, and shall not die after, and shall receive an inheritance before the Lord in the holy city, that he liveth when the Lord shall come, and has kept the faith, blessed is he. Nevertheless it is appointed to him to die in the age of man, wherefore children shall grow up until they become old. Old men shall die, but they shall not sleep in the dust, but they shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, wherefore for this cause preach the apostles unto the world the resurrection of the dead. Section 20, paragraph 13. Extract from a revelation to the prophet Joseph. And in that day Adam blessed God and was filled, and began to prophesy concerning all the families of the earth, saying, Blessed be the name of God, for because of my transgression 
My eyes are opened, and in this life I shall have joy, and again in the flesh I shall see God. Extract from the Prophecy of Enoch And righteousness I will send down out of heaven, and truth will I send forth out of the earth to bear testimony of my only begotten, his resurrection from the dead, yea, and also the resurrection of all men. The Testimony of Joseph Smith As concerning the resurrection, I will merely say that all men will come forth from the grave as they lie down, whether old or young. There will not be added one cubit to their stature, neither taken from it. All will be raised by the power of God, having spirit in their bodies and not blood. March twentieth, 1842, History of Joseph Smith There are two kinds of beings in heaven, viz. angels, who are resurrected personages, having bodies of flesh and bones. For instance, Jesus said, Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. Second, the spirits of just men made perfect, they who are not resurrected, but inherit the same glory. When a messenger comes, saying he has a message from God, offer him your hand, and request him to shake hands with you. If he be an angel, he will do so, and you will feel his hand. If he be the spirit of a just man made perfect, he will come in his glory, for that is the only way he can appear. Ask him to shake hands with you, but he will not move, because it is contrary to the order of heaven for a just man to deceive, but he will still deliver his message. If it be the devil, as an angel of light, when you ask him to shake hands, he will offer you his hand, and you will not feel anything. You may therefore detect him. These are three grand keys whereby you may know whether any administration is from God. Thursday, February 9, 1843, History of Joseph Smith Whatever principle of intelligence we attain unto in this life, it will rise with us in the resurrection. And if a person gains more knowledge and intelligence in this life through his diligence and obedience than another, he will have so much the advantage in the world to come. There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundation of this world upon which all blessings are predicated, and when we obtain any blessing from God it is by obedience to that law upon which it is predicated. The Father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's, the Son also, but the Holy Ghost has not a body of flesh and bones, but is a personage of spirit. Were it not so, the Holy Ghost could not dwell in us. A man may receive the Holy Ghost, and it may descend upon him, and not tarry with him. Sunday, April 2, 1843, History of Joseph Smith To a remark of Elder O. Pratt's that a man's body changes every seven years, President Joseph Smith replied, There is no fundamental principle belonging to a human system that ever goes into another in this world or in the world to come. I care not what the theories of men are. We have the testimony that God will raise us up, and he has the power to do it. If anyone supposes that any part of our bodies, that is, the fundamental parts thereof, ever goes into another body, he is mistaken. Friday, April 7, 1843, History of Joseph Smith Speaking of eternal duration of matter, I said, there is no such thing as immaterial matter. All spirit is matter, but is more fine or pure, and can only be discerned by purer eyes. We cannot see it. But when our bodies are purified, we shall see that it is all matter. Wednesday, May 17, 1843, History of Joseph Smith As the Father hath power in himself, so hath the Son power in himself, to lay down his life and take it again, so he has a body of his own. The Son doeth what he hath seen the Father do. Then the Father hath some day laid down his life and taken it again. So he has a body of his own. Each one will be in his own body, and yet the sectarian world believe the body of the Son is stuffed into the fathers. Gods have an ascendancy over the angels who are ministering servants. In the resurrection, some are raised to be angels, others are raised to become gods. Sunday, June 11, 1843, History of Joseph Smith